Hello and welcome. This is Slice TV. I'm Lauren Hammock and I'll be with you here for the next half hour. We're going to take a look at our August issue of Slice, Central Oklahoma's premier lifestyle magazine. We've got a lot coming up, so stay with us. This time of year we think of football seasons starting up, but at the Armstrong Auditorium in Edmond, another season has already gotten underway. And with me is Ryan Malone, who's the concert manager for the Armstrong Auditorium, here to tell us a little bit about the season you guys have getting underway. Yes, thank you. Thanks for having me. Welcome. And we, uh, we at Armstrong Auditorium are very excited about the season coming up. We have uh, Marvin Hamlish coming up September 8th, and that really is going to be the, well, it's going to kick off the fall uh, part of our season. We had an event already this summer, one of, our, one of the 16 events at Armstrong Auditorium, but Marvin Hamlish coming, and he's going to be performing with the Oklahoma City Philharmonic on September the 8th. That's a big one. It's going to be the big one. Yeah. yeah. So we're really excited about Marvin Hamlish coming to Armstrong Auditorium, and he will be conducting the, the Philharmonic, as I said, but also he's bringing Kevin Cole, who's the premier Gershwin pianist, and they'll be doing Rhapsody in Blue and American in Paris. So it's okay. going to be a, a Gershwin uh, extravaganza program right. with this uh, great artist uh, who has won basically every award there is to win in entertainment. He's won Grammys and a Tony and a Golden Globes and Oscars and Emmys and even a Pulitzer Prize. Right, right. He's got it all. He's the name to know. He is the name <laughs> to know. That's right. Uh, so uh, you've got Marvin Hamlish with Oklahoma City Philharmonic. That's September 8th. And then you've got, you know, in a season of 16 performances, there's something going on all the time. So what are some of the other highlights? Well, Marvin Hamlish kicks off Armstrong Auditorium's pop series. Oh, I see. And so there's two other events in that series. And another one, it's just another blockbuster name, is Brian Stokes Mitchell, one of the leading men in Broadway right now. And he'll be doing a, a solo concert uh, in November. And then we have Doc Severinsen coming on the uh, spring side of the series. And he'll be coming with his big band. And so that'll just be another uh, outstanding event to, to cap off the pops side of the what we have to offer at Armstrong Auditorium. And then what are some of the other series? You have a, a, a classical or a chamber series or? Well mostly what Armstrong Auditorium presents is classical concerts. The pop series and the folk series are something new we're offering this year with the extra events. People and are gonna love those. They're gonna love it and it's yes. a very sophisticated pops offering, sophisticated folk with uh, Step Crew and with the Chieftains from Ireland uh -huh. in that series. And then the, uh, the Russian Masters series is going to be fantastic. We have a, you know, a Russian piano duo. We have the Tchaikovsky St. Petersburg State Orchestra, you know, direct from wow. St. Petersburg, Russia coming. Wow. So we're really excited about that. And then, of course, the Moscow Festival Ballet will be uh, performing for us as so well. So very international, very world class. And tell me about these Spanish guitarists, because I noticed one of them was very cute, <laughs> very fetching. <laughs> well, the Romero's family is the, is, they're dubbed the royal family of the guitar. See, si. And they are just, uh, the, the, it's a night of Spanish guitar music, so you can't go wrong right. with them. And they're, they're all, you know, they're, they're all one family. And so it's great to watch them perform. It's so entertaining. We've had them in our series before but this is the first time in Armstrong Auditorium and when you when you watch them perform you feel like you're in their living room and they're just sort of jamming you know in the parlor type of thing and so especially with Armstrong Auditorium being such an intimate venue that's what I was getting ready to say maybe part of it is them and then the other part is that the venue is so intimate right. how many seats in 823 seats in Armstrong okay so that is a nice a nice venue for it's very intimate feeling close and part of it absolutely well you, you feel like you're you're there with them and they're and they're jamming and, and so even if you've seen them before on our series or even if you've seen them anywhere else in the world you and they're very they're very well known but you've you've not seen them until you've seen them at Armstrong Auditorium and every, I mean everything you see at Armstrong Auditorium is going to be is going to be more intimate. It's a, an acoustically superior space, right? And then, and then you're less than 75 feet from the stage. Now, um, how will people go to get tickets? Where should they go? And I'm thinking there's 
maybe need to get on it for Marvin Hamlish, right? Yes, Marvin Hamlish tickets are going very quickly. Go to armstrongauditorium.org, armstrongauditorium.org. It's so easy. The ticket, the ticket system is so easy this year. You can buy the packages like the Russian Masters or the Vocal Masters or those types of things. It makes it very easy to, to buy the package. Or you can buy, uh, you can piece them together, sample them, and make your own subscription. So it's very simple to do and very user-friendly. You can even see the seat uh, well, you see the, the view from the seat of what the stage oh, nice. looks like. Oh, that's very so it's, cool. So it's very user friendly and interactive, and you can choose your seats. So go to Armstrong Auditorium, especially now for Marvin Hamlish if you want okay, to see Okay, so it. that's armstrongauditorium.org. We will see you there. Well, behind me, there's a giant version of the August issue, the cover of Slice Magazine. It's a beautiful home in Oklahoma City, owned by a young family. And um, it was actually a remodel, and they received help from our guest, David Reynolds, from Red Eagle Construction. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Good to have you. Thanks for having me. So, um, I understand this was a remodel. Um, Keith Renierson, our photographer, got some great shots of the house, and um, but it started out a remodel, and what's tricky about it is it looks sort of like an English cottage on the outside, but the inside is all contemporary. Yes, we, uh, the outside initially had a uh, exterior that had been added on that the homeowner and I felt didn't go with the direction she wanted to go. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So we started with the, the front of the house and took it back more towards its original uh, bones. Oh. And uh, actually, instead of trying to create something new, we actually saved money by going back closer to what was originally there uh -huh. and then put her twist on it. Would you say you went all the way to the studs or how extensive was it? Uh, on the exterior, we, we, we took off what had been added to the original part of the home okay. and went back and uh, built out from there and, and brought in her vision and and stayed in keeping, I think, with the neighborhood. And, right. and that's what we did to the exterior. And uh, so she contacted you, the homeowner contacted you and had um, a pretty good idea of the direction she wanted to go. Did she lean on you a lot for your input? Uh, yes, we. I always listen 
yes. first to see what direction she wants to go and uh, or the client wants to go and uh, and then we take it from there and uh, whether we need to do some design work or what have you we we expand off their thoughts and visions and and help direct them that way. But you bring some inspiration. You've lived on both coasts. And I've lived so on both coasts, traveled through Europe, and studied the Duomos and all everything. I just love architecture. Uh -huh. So I've studied from, the gelato. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's. Uh, I appreciate all architecture, uh, right. new and old, and and uh, so we've had the opportunity to work with some of the great architects in Oklahoma, uh, some out of New York, worked on projects from Carmel to Washington, D.C., so okay. been exposed to a lot of different types of architecture so you and bring design. That with you, you bring that with you to every project? Yes, yes. Right. Yeah, we're not stuck in a certain style, certain years, certain mm -hmm. country type look, so. Um, I noticed that on the photos through the interior that um, she really was consistent with her with her look. Um, she was. She she's uh, uh, knew the direction she wanted to go. Young family, uh, more very family friendly. This house. Oh, very family friendly. Right. And uh, the kids were always on top of the top of our minds and in. in everything we designed mm -hmm. um, but I think we did a good job on on keeping the front exterior uh, in sync with the neighborhood and to the original part mm -hmm. of, the, of, of the house but inside we had a little more freedom to expand right. her new lifestyle her she's a contemporary person and and so we uh, complimented and built off the, the bones that we had to work with. Right. Well, if there's one word I would use to describe this house, it's color. She was not yes. afraid to use uh, any color, and um, her furniture is great. I understand Cunningham Interiors helped with some of the Correct. design. And Correct. So your company is Red Eagle Construction. Yes. RedEagleConstruction.com. That's it. Listen, uh, people should just go and look at your portfolio. It was fabulous. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. There are some beautiful homes, and uh, you've had a hand in all of them, I assume. Everyone. David Reynolds from Red Eagle Construction, thank you so much for joining us. The home is on the cover of our August issue, and you can see more of that at sliceok.com. You can also see more of David's work at RedEagleConstruction.com. It's a great website. Check it out.
Well, there's a special event going on next Saturday that you're going to want to hear about. And my recommendation is that you stop eating today and save up for it. It is Taste for Sight, Prevent Blindness, Oklahoma's annual fundraising event. And they've done this for more than 25 years. 21 restaurants all under the same roof with uh, some brewers and vintners thrown in the mix as well. Uh, with us is Matra Jones. She's the Vice President of Development for Prevent Blindness Oklahoma. Thank you for joining us. Absolutely. Taste Thank for you for having, us, having me here today. Taste for Sight. 21 restaurants yes. under one roof. Can you what, what's not to love? I mean, it's going to be a fabulous event. You know, Taste for Sight, we've been having it now, like you said, for over 25 years. Mm -hmm. Every single year we have crowds for, of more than 600 people. Wow. And, you know, it's just, it's food from the most popular Oklahoma City restaurants. There'll be breweries and vendors that will be available and it's just gonna be a great, a great party. So you could do some wine and beer tasting at Absolutely. the same time. Absolutely, we do have wine and beer right. um, available, so. So um, also I understand there's an auction that's part of this. Yes, there will be a silent auction with, all, oh, with over silent. 80 items. Uh -huh. um, you know, we have items from gift certificates of some of Oklahoma City's most fabulous shops mm -hmm. and salons that have provided services. Uh, we have hotels who have provided, you know, weekend stay, one night stay. Nice. Um, there's just all sorts of, of goodies that will be available for people to to bid on. It's hard to keep an eye on your secret, you know, your silent auction item when you're trying to go around from yes. booth to booth, but yes. I guess it can be done. We're going to have it in a separate area, so okay. um, the event will be at the Civic Center Music Hall, Minders Hall of Mirrors, the and Hall of Mirrors. we will have um, an area that is specifically devoted to the, uh, the silent auction. So there, you know, everything will be in one area, so everyone can just go and browse, and of course there will be, um, you know, tables, bistro tables set out for everyone to go and as they are enjoying their, their wine and graze. food, and as mm -hmm. they graze, they can mm -hmm. go right out and take a look at the items. Now, the um, proceeds benefit Prevent Blindness Oklahoma. Yes. And how do you all um, use those proceeds? What are the services that you provide as a result of that? So, Prevent Blindness Oklahoma, we were established in 1965. Mm -hmm. We are the only nonprofit in the state exclusively dedicated to preserving sight and preventing blindness. Mm -hmm. Our cornerstone program is our children's vision screening program. Mm -hmm. We're in last year we provided over 278,000 Oklahoma children with free vision screenings. Right. I remember when I yes. was a kid. I remember Chances I are remember you, you were screened by screened. Prevent Blindness Oklahoma Screener. Yes. I've since had LASIK four times my <laughs> own campaign to prevent blindness, but that's okay. So so yeah, we provide the, the free vision screenings uh -huh. and um, of those 278,000 that were screened, over 30,000 were referred on for comprehensive wow. eye exams. Right. So in addition to that, we, or in addition to our children's vision screening program, we provide advocacy, child advocacy, and uh, community health, and, community health fairs and awareness on eye and health safety. Yeah, now, so a lot of kids, by the time they're, what, school age or? So 80% of, of what we learn is visual through age 12. Well, 86% oh, okay. of children through age 12 have not been to an eye doctor. Wow. So if okay, that tells so. you anything about the need, and of course there's a direct correlation between you know, vision disorders and a child's performance in school. So with school starting, it's a great time of year to go ahead and get those eye exams taken care of. Absolutely. Yes. So do that first, mm -hmm. and then next, go to the website to, t to get some taste for sight. Information. Information and inspiration. Mm -hmm. And the website is? PreventBlindnessOK.org. PreventBlindnessOK.org, and the event is Taste for Sight. We'll see you there.
Well, looking ahead a little bit, next month we will feature fall fashion in our September issue, but this month we wanted to get a head start for back to school because it is that time of year. And back to school always means backpacks. I would start with this one. Uh-huh, this is the look I'm going for. And uh, with me today is Sandra Wilson. She's with Funky Monkey. We did a great spread in our August issue on back to school style. And she's here to talk to us a little bit about where to start. And I think where to start is right here. I love this. Yeah, this backpack is actually one of our top sellers. It mm -hmm. comes in many different colors. We also have the Juicy Couture backpacks. We have a messenger, and then we just have your standard backpack. And then we also have the little Beatrix for the little toddlers. Okay, love those. Um, now you've got some matching outfits that we're gonna look at in just a yes. little bit that yes. will kind of coordinate, coordinate with all of these. Yes. That's key, that's key. So let's look, take a look at some of these images that we had from back to school fashion. Okay, now, Sandra, I have to tell you, I have a daughter and two sons, and when we found out that we were having a boy, I said, oh, a boy, all you can do with boys is sports and nautical. Mm -hmm. And my husband said, and who needs nautical? Yeah. So these days, though, now my kids are all grown, but um, there's so much more going on besides yeah, sports yeah, and nautical. Yeah, they've actually, Monster Republic's done a great thing about that they have actually made it a little bit more edgier look for boys mm -hmm. because it is so hard. Even at market, it's hard to find some edgy stuff for boys. Monster Republic is one of the best brands to actually find that. I love this little monster hunter. Oh yes, isn't that cute? That's this is darling. a little jacket and then underneath is Monster Republic as well. Mm -hmm. And then also Justin Bieber has really made these popular. These oh. are some gray Rock and Republic skinnies for little boys. Okay, okay. That's great. Okay, these are must-haves, yes? Yes. All right. Let me set those down. Okay. Look how cute. I know. This is one of our top brands, Twirls and Twigs. It's very, it's got a mod print to it. Um, it's definitely really girly, very, uh -huh. it's cotton. So, you know, for this hot weather, it's it's a perfect dress for right. back to school. Right, and this will go all the way through the fall. Yes. The little owl motif kind of matches the backpack yes, and lunchbox that we had it up does. there just earlier. A lot of the other brands are bringing back kind of the mod print, and the owl is one of our popular animals, a lot of kids' brands' features. Okay, yeah. all right, thank you. Oh. Yeah. I love this. Isn't this cute? Yes. This is one of our more preppier brands. We got the Alpha Industry khaki pants. These and feel durable, like yes, they can yes. handle it on the playground yes, for the course, whole year. Of course. And then we have our little checker. It's called Chow Marco. It's a new brand. Okay. It's also kind of neat because they have a flip cuff that has a different oh, how yeah, cute. little pattern. Oh, so yeah, it kinda matches adds a little, the little bit something. Yeah. And then we have the Appa Man coat, the P yes. pea coat. This is one of our top sellers. We're bringing it back this year again. It's been one of our best jackets. Okay, yeah. okay, now you said that um, when we were talking earlier that some celebrities have made this very yes. popular. Yes, Angelina Jolie, mm -hmm. uh, her sons wear it, and then also Gwen Stefani. I mean, this jacket is very popular even with celebrities. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think with the collar popped up Isn't and that cute? you know look this whole look. yeah this mm -hmm. whole look you're the man in this. Yep. This is great. Well, thank you so much oh, for bringing welcome. these. Uh, yes. You all are ready for back to school oh, at yes. Funky Monkey. Yes, we and have all the accessories that you'll need and all the clothing. We're ready. All right. So uh, Funky Monkey is located in North Oklahoma City near yes. Quail Springs Mall. Yes. What's the actual store address? It is one four one. 01 North May Avenue. Okay, yes. and that's just by Quail Springs? Yes, and, and Cafe 7. 
Yes. All right. Yeah. And then we can visit you online at? FunkyMonkeyOKC.com. Okay. You've got a great website. There's yes. a lot to choose from. Yes. So be sure and check it out and have a great school year. Hey, before we say goodbye, we have a few people we'd like to thank. Opepco Studios for providing us this awesome facility, and BD Homes in Class and Curve in Oklahoma City provided these great chairs that um, worked out so well for this afternoon. Uh, we will be back here September 10th, right here on News Channel 4. That's a Saturday at noon. And until then, you can read Slice 24-7 at sliceok.com. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you the next time.